Hi there, Yoshi Yu here. Welcome to the channel. 元気にしてますか Today we will be talking about money and specifically the national currency of Japan, yen. Perhaps you are traveling to Japan for business for the first time, or you are planning to visit Japan once things settle down. Or maybe you've recently read a novel, After Dark, by Haruki Murakami and thought, Huh, the gang just dropped 7,000 yen on the ground. I wonder how much that's worth. Whatever the case may be, after watching this video, you will be much knowledgeable about yen and would know more about what it's like to use money in Japan. The national currency of Japan is called yen. In terms of its value, one US dollar is about 100 yen. And one euro is about 120 yen. That makes the 7,000 yen the gang drop on the ground from the novel to be about 70 US dollars. For the money that we can physically hold, we have 10,000 yen bill, 5,000 yen bill, 2,000 yen bill, and 1,000 yen bill. For the coins, we have 500, 100, 50, 10. 5 and 1 yen. 1 yen is equivalent to 1 cent in the US. It is pretty common for people to use 10,000 yen bill or 5,000 yen bill for everyday purchase. So when you go to the store and find out that 10,000 yen is the only bill you have in your wallet, don't worry about it. The cashier will usually not make any mean face. Have you ever been to Japan or have the plan to do so in the near future? If so, please say hi in the comment section below. You will be amazed to find how reasonable food costs may be in Japan. For breakfast, you can stop by nearby convenience stores and find endless selections of onigiri and pan in the price range of 100 to 200 yen. Japan also has many local bakeries that offer delicious pastries too, so make sure you do check them out. For lunch, there will be wide selections to choose from in the sub 1000 yen price range. Those may be anything from curry, katsudon, gyudon, ramen, soba, udon, you name it. You really wouldn't have any problem finding what you would enjoy eating for lunch. For dinner, that would depend on what you would like to have for that evening.、Uh, let's say if you decide to go to Unlimited Yakiniku Buffet Place, or high end Kaiseki Ryori restaurants, Italian, French restaurants, yeah, they will cost you some good money. But then, if you'd stick with a medium price range joints,、uh, let's say price range of 1,000 to 3,000 yen, you'll be able to have a wonderful and tasty, high quality dinner. Uh, that you would enjoy. Now, don't forget that later in the evening, if you go to the food court sections of department stores or grocery stores, oftentimes they'll have a heavily discounted sushi combo packages and other meal options. So, that may be another thing for you to consider. When you are traveling to Japan for the first time, you may have a few practical questions about money in your mind, such as Do I need cash? Yes. Why bring traveler's check? Isn't that very common these days? Why bring credit card from my local country? You can try that, but some venue may not accept it. Do I really, really need cash? Yes, and that is double yes. You see, Japan is a cash based society when it comes to everyday purchase. Due to the spike of amount of people traveling to Japan in recent years, more and more stores are starting to accept credit cards as a method of payment. Nevertheless, the culture is still very much cash focused. You have credit cards and debit cards from your local country in your wallet. What do you do with them while you're in Japan? For credit cards, you can see if the hotels that you're staying and major restaurants can accept them as a method of payment. Especially for restaurants, however,、uh, be prepared that the store may come back to you and say they can only accept cash, in which case, that is your option. For debit cards, you can withdraw money, yen, from ATMs. 
Now, these are ATMs specifically from or at Japan postal offices and inside 7-Eleven convenience stores. For the ATMs inside the Japan postal offices, uh, do note that they are usually accessible only during the operating hours of the postal office during the day. Uh, for the ATMs and convenience store, now uh, at the time of this recording, uh, they are usually located inside 7-Eleven convenience stores. Some other convenience stores may also have ATMs that can accept your cards, but it may be rare. Another option is to bring your country's local currency and exchange them into yen at the airports once you arrive to Japan. Many major airports in Japan would have GPAs or JTBs that can help you exchange the currency into yen for fee. If you are a type of a traveler who would like to plan ahead earlier, you can reach out to your local banks or look for uh, service providers such as Travel EX and see if they can help you exchange and better yet uh, deliver yen to your home or office prior to your departure to Japan. If you reach out to them early enough, you may be able to enjoy a much competitive rates and pricing. It's common for people in Japan to carry 20,000 to 30,000 yen in form of cash just because we are so used to use cash to make purchase. Now, let's say you would like to reduce the amount of cash you bring outside. Um, if that's the case, getting these IC cards may be the way to go. These rechargeable cars will let you pay for train fees, buses, shopping at department stores, convenience stores, arcade center, etc. Once you acquire these cards, all you have to do is tap the cards to the payment sensor at the stores and boom, your transactions complete. You can purchase IC cards at the airports or at various train stations. Enter basic information, make deposit, and within a few seconds, you will have your own IC cards. Nice thing about IC cards is that whether you're living in Japan or visiting Japan for a short period, you can acquire your IC cards. This is an advantage over, let's say, applying for cash cards or credit card in Japan, which would typically ask you to be living in Japan for more than six months and or have a job already in Japan. Depending on the area of Japan that you are visiting, the IC cards available for you to purchase would vary. Starting from up north, we have Kitaka for Hokkaido, Suika and Pasmo for Kanto, Manaka for Nagoya, Ikoka for Kansai, and Tsugoka for Kyushu, and there are many, many more. Different IC cards will have different features and capabilities. The one I have is Suika, and this is a pretty nifty card. Uh, this thing can be used all around Japan. Some of these IC cards will have regular version and traveler's version. When you are a traveler, that does not mean you have to get the traveler's version of IC card. You have the choice to decide between regular and travelers. Now, these cards would typically have different design and have different names associated to them. In addition to that, purchase price as well as some of the features may be different. For example, this is a regular version for Suica. If I don't use this card for 10 years, it's gonna expire. Also, down the road, if I ever decide to return this card to certain train stations, they can issue me refund for any unused remaining balance. Unfortunately, at the time of this video's recording, if you have the traveler's version of Suica, the train stations will not be able to issue you any refund for unused balance. Also, traveler's version of Suica can be used only for 28 days. This does not mean that all of the traveler's IC cards have features inferior compared to the regular one. Ikoka, which is the IC card that you can purchase around Kansai area, the regular versions can expire uh, similar to Suica, 10 years of non-usage. However, if you have the traveler's version of Ikoka, they will not expire. You can use it indefinitely. Also, you can get refund from certain train stations for any unused remaining balance. 
Now, as you can imagine, these features of different IC cards would likely change over time. So I recommend that prior to you purchasing IC cards, you do some research so you can determine and make decision uh, over if you are gonna get the regular version or the traveler's version of IC cards to suit your need. If you happen to be an iPhone user, you're in luck. You can find Suica in your Apple Pay once you update the region of iPhone to Japan. There, you can acquire a new Suica and also start charging the IC card by using your credit card. That's one much convenient way than having the traditional IC card because if this is the only thing you have, you have to bring this physical card and cash to nearby stations to charge the IC card. At the time of the recording of this video, to my knowledge, no other IC cards can be found or linked to Apple Pay. It's only Suica. Well, I believe that's all I got for you today. If you found this topic interesting, helpful, or useful, then please leave your comments down below and also subscribe. I thank you very much for your time watching this video. Please be safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Mata ne!